information that I'm about to share with you I've never seen anywhere else. I'm sure there are other people out there aware of this information, but I've never seen it shared before. It comes from years of studying, experimenting with, and building permanent magnet motor force systems. In case you missed it, in part one of the series I covered the imbalance system. I explained how it worked and how to test an assembly. In part two, I explained the exchange force pulse system. I covered spin accelerators, spin flipping, and methodologies for how to test this type of assembly as well. I also pointed out that Howard Johnson is the only person I'm aware of that holds patents in all three systems. If you missed either of them, go check them out. The three types of magnetic motor systems are the imbalance system, which is the most common, the induction expulsion system, and the exchange force pull system. Each of these systems can be built in linear or rotary motor assemblies. In this video I will be focusing on the induction expulsion system. An induction expulsion system defined in simple terms is any permanent magnet assembly that draws an object into its magnetic field and expels it. The object could be composed of metal or magnets. The best induction expulsion system will do this with zero repulsion at the entrance of the magnetic assembly and zero attraction at the exit of the assembly. If an assembly has low level repulsion at the entrance and low level attraction at the exit point, it's still possible to use it for rotary motion or cyclical movement through a series of tracks, though it can be more difficult. It's also necessary for the start point and exit point of the cart or object to be on a level plane to be a true induction expulsion system. This must be done with nearly zero influence outside of the magnetic assembly used in a track or stator, though gravity can be used in conjunction with a magnetic assembly. However, the use of electromagnetics, such as magnetic wires collecting a charge, from the permanent magnet portion of the device to redistribute into said device would constitute an entirely different magnetic motor type. Thus it would not fit into the classification set forth for the three types of permanent magnet motor force systems. There are a broad range of assembly types that could be classified as this type of motive force system. Permanent magnetic propulsion systems, also known as SMOTs, for example, most of the ones that are commonly demonstrated on YouTube could not be considered true induction expulsion systems, however. I refer to them as simple magnetic toys if they aren't able to draw a steel ball into an assembly on a level plane and expel the ball on that same level plane. The amount of work that is required to align an assembly like this to properly function for cyclical movement is far more difficult than the simple design might indicate. Some great researchers on YouTube spent months and even years attempting this. A couple of the best are Michael Shaw, his channel is called The Batman. He's a good researcher and has some really great builds. There are some nice builds on YouTube user Wood Brass and Glass's channel. Another is Bill Mayhess. There are a couple of people, Greg Watson and Epidaxi, who claim to have built a running looped version of the system. This was pointed out to me by Stefan over at overunity.com. He has some information about it on his website. This type of assembly can be used to move a steel ball through three successions of gates, but requires some effort to ensure the system is level and that you're actually accomplishing any motive gain. Then there's this Howard Johnson gate, which he patented. By altering the electron spins of magnets in his gate, it will effectively draw a cart into the gate and expel it out the other side.
For anyone who's ever built one of these types of assemblies, the first thing you notice is that there's a strong field of repulsion that you have to pass through before you get to the area of attraction at the entrance of the gate. So it would take some creative work to alter the assembly in a way that would cancel out most or all of that repulsion in order to build a rotary version of this design. Johnson worked on a variation of this assembly for one of his rotary designs. It was one of his most tested assemblies. You'll also notice that there are quite a few people working with other variations of this design, commonly referred to as a Bedini gate assembly. It passes a rotor magnet through a few gates and then comes to a stop. A properly functioning version of this type of device more clearly demonstrates over unity than any other magnetic motive force system, which is one of the reasons why it's my favorite of the three types of permanent magnet motive force systems. One of the other reasons is the fact that you can also include one or both of the other two types of magnetic motive force systems into this type of system, or neither. So this can be a very complex assembly or a very simplistic one, so long as it obeys the three basic principles. One, it has to draw an object, cart, or rotor into an assembly that is set up on a level plane without any repulsion at the entry point of the assembly. Two, accelerate that object, cart, or rotor all the way through the assembly. Three, it has to expel it out the other side with enough motive force that it is prevented from being drawn back into the assembly. When you can successfully accomplish all three of these principles, you have an assembly that can be used to build a rotary or cyclical magnetic motor. So it's simple to test this type of assembly. Simply make sure that an assembly obeys all three of these basic principles and then loop the design or arc the geometry. This completes my three-part series on the three types of permanent magnet motive force systems. Thanks for watching and do great things.